You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. Hey, y'all. Just going to take a quick break from this conversation to let you know about the sponsor of today's episode. That sponsor is, well, frankly, it's me. It's Lee Brown University. Look, it's no secret that real estate is crazy competitive, getting more so every day. And when the pie doesn't get any bigger, but the people wanting a piece of it do, you've got to figure out a competitive advantage. And that's why I created Lee Brown University. It's everything you need from soup to nuts, cradle to grave, point A to point B, whatever point B is. Each of you has different goals. So maybe you're a new to the career realtor or you're a super experienced pro who can't figure out uh, that next level. There's something in my course that's going to help you break through. It's designed for you before I even met you. So enroll in Lee Brown University today. You go to www.leebrownu.com and I'll see you there. Now, back to this amazing content. Hello, friends. I'm Lee Brown. You're here on Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today's angle is a little bit different because I'm bringing to you another trainer, coach, and speaker in the real estate profession who happens to hail from Colorado. He's going to share with you a couple of odd, sad, crazy moments that happened in his speaking career. We're also going to talk about real estate a little bit too. So I hope you'll enjoy learning from Eric Thompson and I'll see you on the other side. Hey, Eric, I'm glad to have you today on the big show here. And I got to say, it's very impressive that your shirt kind of matches your backdrop. Do you always dress to match your office? Yeah. Yeah. I do always. So I have all <laughs> different backdrops and I'll switch them up depending on my shirt on my attire. So that's how I do it. I mean, it's dedication to the Zoom life and I just want you to know it does not go unnoticed. Oh, good. Good. Thank you for noticing. I appreciate that. So tell us a little bit about you. Where are you located? What do you do in and around real estate? Tell us about yeah. Kurt Thompson. All the things. So I'm here, my home in Fort Collins, Colorado an amazing place about an hour north of Denver. I lived in Colorado my whole life. I've been a realtor since 1994, so it's pretty much all I know. I grew up in real estate because my dad was a realtor. Lee, I took my first steps in a model home. No joke. So I started (laughs) walking in a model home. So I think it was like destiny that I would be in real estate. So So, wait a minute, was your dad having an open house? Was he repping the builder or something? He was repping the builder, repping the builder. And there I was visiting him and I started walking in a model home. So here I am today, right? That's precious. Is he still in the business? Yes. He's uh, now a developer, almost retired developer. So you're Uh, a developer, yeah. Yeah. So I've done a lot in real estate. I've loved it. And now I own a brokerage. I'm a part owner in a brokerage, but mostly what I do is training and coaching and speaking and those kinds of things. So, but I love it. Love it all. Well, I mean, that's the fun part about real estate that most people never see. They think about realtors and they see opening doors and putting a house on the market, stick a sign in the yard. They don't see all the different avenues, whether it's new home representation or developing or speaking and training and mentoring. There's just a thousand different avenues that exist when you're in this business, which I'm sure you agree with me. That's one of the best things about it. You get a little bored, shazam, take a different pathway and turn into something else. (laughs) Right? Uh, So many different ways you can take it. Never a dull moment, never a boring day in real estate. You're right. I do love that about real estate. So many different avenues. Love it. So for you, what's been the biggest challenge in transitioning from doing the actual sales to being the one who's leading the salespeople? Because In real estate, the turnover rate is really high. And for my listeners and viewers that aren't familiar, real estate is wildly high turnover. 85% of realtors are estimated to leave within the first two years because they find out that A, commission life is really hard and very erratic. And B, this business is incredibly demanding, not just of your money, but your time and your energy. And not everybody's cut out for it. So when you're training and running a brokerage, you're suddenly trying to guard those people who we need in the business. They're really great ones. Guard them from all those pressures. And that's 
a lot because it's not just one person you're helping. It's generally several. So when you go from production to training, it can be a challenge because not everybody's cut out for management and training, as you know, is management. So what was the challenge for you? How did you overcome it? Give us some insights in that. Yeah, the biggest thing for me, and I love this question, the biggest thing was making sure that we have the right people that we are training and coaching, the right people that we're bringing into the company. I know you agree. And so my little mantra, my motto is no part-timers, no prima donnas. And those well, that, that narrows your list a whole bunch. Right, a whole lot, a whole lot. Yeah, so that... Anyone like that who is a prima donna or a part-timer, they just can totally ruin the culture. So the great people, what they want, they want to be around a bunch of other great people. So you just got to be super selective, really take your time before you invite anyone into your world. And I've found, I guess, after doing this for a long time, that life is too short to hang out with people that I really would rather not hang out with. I mean, God bless them all, all respect to them, but I become really picky on who gets to work in our company. So, and I know well, you're the there's a lot of horses in Fort Collins. And so you're allowed to use that phrase as a butt for every saddle. <laughs> that's and right. That's right. That's what you're describing here. So you mentioned that you really want to attract the right people. So tell our listeners, what do you consider to be the best characteristics of a successful realtor? And by the way, guys, I'm going to add an asterisk there. Because successful doesn't always mean sales and money. For a lot of our agents, success looks like the time that they spend in or the service that they're able to give back to the profession. It can look like a lot of things. So don't default in your head to actual sales, even though for some people that's their measure and that's perfectly great too. So what are those characteristics, Eris, that build the perfect realtor for us? Yes. And you know what? I've started using the word fulfilled instead of successful. Oh, I love <laughs> that. Like, right? It's just like, it's about the whole life and their whole world and all the things, not just number of transactions, but yeah, like, my whole world. Mm. there's the obvious ones. What's it going to take? Like number of people in their sphere. How well do they know that the community, do they run their business like a business? But a big one for me is work ethic. Of course, coachability is big. And Lee, what I've uh, had fun with in interviews, whether it be a rookie or a veteran, I'm thinking about coaching or training someone or inviting someone in the brokerage. I have fun with the question, can you tell me about your first job? Tell me about your first ever job. And they'll get a funny look on their face. They'll be like, my first real job? Like my first real job out of college? No, like your first job. Like was it babysitting, walking dogs? Like what was it? And you will hear the most fascinating stories And what you find out, number one, is if they have a work ethic, because if they're 14 or younger when they have their first job, what that means is work was expected in the household. Like they grew up in a place that where they were expected to work. So they have a great work ethic. And then you hear about, are they a go-getter? Are they entrepreneurial? You know, you hear the jobs about when they were 12 and they partnered up with a friend of theirs to start a landscaping or lawn mowing business. They started a babysitting business. They started shoveling walks, all kinds of great things that you find out about. My favorite ones, Lee, are people who grew up on a farm and you say to them, so tell me about your first ever job. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be like, you mean like when I was like five, when I would get up to go milk the cows, do you mean that? So, you know, like instantly they have a work ethic, they're go-getters, like trying to motivate them will never be an issue. So that's a fun question to ask. Tell me about your first job. Okay. So Eric, tell me about your first job. Yeah. So I started landscaping when I was 13. Uh, I was out there mowing lawns and mowing the grass around uh, homes and office buildings way back in the day, summertime. So that was my first job. Okay. So then I got to ask you a follow-up question on that because many people get into real estate because they watched Million Dollar Agent or HGTV and they think they dress up and drive around and make oodles and scads of money and they have zero concept of the expenses and the investment they're going to have to make. So who bought that lawnmower when you were 13? And if your dad (laughs) bought it, did he charge you a capital expense for that? He did. Yeah, that was a loan. (laughs) Your dad. Answer. (laughs) And I'm not even joking about that, y'all, because Eric can back me up on this. There's a lot of realtors who get into the business with no concept of how much it's going to cost them to establish a brand and establish a reputation. And if they don't come into the business with an appropriate cushion, it's really hard to make a dent because it's a highly competitive business. And then we also see the terrible fiscal habits of many realtors who have a commission check that comes in and they think, I have money. And then it's gone. And they think, 
oh, I'm going to have to go sell something else now because the money's gone. And that can be a terrible cycle that's really hard to break. What do you do with your realtors to help them establish good financial and fiscal habits, considering that you had to pay your dad back for that lawnmower? <laughs> you had you know, a sales meeting because I totally would. Totally. I'll, I'll totally do that. The best practice, I think, is to pay yourself a salary. So to have your commissions go into one account and then that account is paying you a consistent income. Like what drives realtors crazy is the inconsistency of their income. Well, make it consistent. Seed that account with some money and then get used to paying yourself a salary. And then every quarter you can pay yourself a bonus. Every quarter you can take a part of it and put it toward investments. So get some stability into the game and that will really help you out. And every quarter you should pay your quarterly taxes. Oh yeah, it turns out that those are due too. The government wants their money. And if you're watching the sheer volume of spending that's happening right now, guess who's going to pay for that, y'all? It ain't any of those elected officials in D.C. They're going to come after all of you regular working people to take those dollars that don't exist because the government is a net taker, not producer of squat. I have to stick that in there because I'm very inflamed about the infrastructure bills. Because if you didn't notice... They're looking at charging taxes per mile, and that's going to be a massive hit on realtor professionals because we drive a lot in this business, and especially in an area like Fort Collins, where you've got a lot of rural ranch lands outside of the city center where an agent could be doing a lot of driving. So anyway, we won't go down that rabbit hole, but people pay attention to what your elected officials are saying yes to that they haven't even read, but that this girl has, and if I can do it. They sure could on their government salaries. But anyway, I digress. So, Eric, in real estate, you apparently took your first steps in a model house. It's the cutest story ever. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure all of my listeners are still going, oh, it's your sweet dad taking you to an open house. And then you sold houses and now you train. And then you've had the chance to speak and coach other agents, too. So in all of those different versions of real estate, you have to have come across the kind of stories that my viewers and listeners really enjoy, which are the stories that nobody would ever believe could possibly happen until they happen and you have to deal with it. So what you got? What do you tell Oh, my gosh. I got a couple funny ones. And Lee, I'll tell you, they're both embarrassing. And these are like top embarrassing moments of my life, but they're hilarious. And they, how they tie to real estate is it's both involve me speaking in front of realtors. So these are embarrassing public speaking stories. In front of your peers. In front of my peers. The first one is just pure comedy. The second one is funny. And it also, there's a little lesson in there. So the first story, Lee, is about the time I tore my pants in the crotch seconds before I was invited on stage. Because of course. Because that's what happens, right? So, okay, so there I was, uh, 36 years old. I was running a division of a brokerage. It was a small division of a big company. So the big brokerage company was based in Vail, Colorado. I was running a division in a smaller location in, in Colorado. And I had a monthly sales meeting with my small team. And my boss had a monthly sales meeting with the big team, right? And so I asked my boss for several months in a row, hey, can I speak to the big group one day? Like there I was kind of in the minor leagues and I wanted to go to the big show, right? I wanted to be in front of the- Gotta ask. And so I asked and asked and asked and pestered and pestered. And finally he relented. He said, fine, Eric, you can do it. You can speak to the big group. So this is like about 150 people. And these are like in Vail, Colorado, some high flying, highly productive people, Earning hey, Madonna, maybe, but uh, there's some like some pretty big time realtors in the audience. So I'm in the front row before I go on, and I'm so nervously that I'm sitting there and I'm like flapping my. Oh, you can see your heartbeat. Why? What's that? You see your heartbeat? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, totally, totally see my heartbeat. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm moving my legs back and forth, like flapping them like butterfly wings, just with my nervous energy, not really paying attention to what I'm doing. And I hear a rip. I hear fabric tear. And I look down and all I see is my underwear. And Thanks, you weren't commando and your wife is probably saying the same thing. <laughs> right? Thank God he was not commando. Right? <laughs> and as I'm looking down and seeing only my underwear, what I hear is, okay, now everyone help me welcome Eric Thompson. And Thank God I had a notepad sitting in front of me, <laughs> had a notepad, 
put it in front of my crotch, go up, go up and present. And no one was the wiser. No one knew. I did the whole thing with this notepad kind of sitting right there in front of my pants, was able to present. I had my PowerPoint and no one knew any difference. Even afterwards, no one said, hey, Eric, it was kind of weird. You're holding that notepad in front well, of me. Well, that's you. good. That means they were looking where they should have been looking at your right. eyes instead of anywhere else. <laughs> Right. And my dazzling presentation. So all I can think about, though, is the conversation my husband had with my son, who's 15, about what to do in class if you're confronted with a situation that 15 year old boys might encounter. And that's all I can think about is <laughs> overhearing that conversation, how hilarious <laughs> that was. So I guess it's probably good that realtors tend to be middle aged. And women, yes. for the most part, because they will give you all the grace in the world had they noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they would. Yes, they would. Thank goodness. Okay, so that's story number one. Story number two is a little bit further back in time. I'm 33 years old. This is like one of my first ever times speaking in front of a group of my peers. So this, again, was about 150 people, a different group of people. But my only, my only job then was to introduce another speaker. Like, that's all I had to do. I had about a 90-second part to introduce someone who is at the time a pretty well-known uh, sales trainer, motivational speaker. I put together a group of realtors to come hear this guy. So my only job is to introduce him. And Lee, I go up in front of these people. And again, I was so nervous. I was crazy nervous, holding a handheld microphone. It's shaking in my hand. And I'm in front of all these people I know and I like and I respect and I'm so nervous that I dropped the microphone on the ground. And it's just like, you can imagine the noise and the sound reverberating around. And I kind of stammered through the introduction. The speaker comes up and kind of grabs a microphone out of my hand and gives me kind of this sour look like, great, now I have to go up and kind of clean up this mess, right? And I remember sitting there and after I sat down and introduced him and I was like, darn it, like that's, I'm done with that. I'm just done being nervous in front of a crowd. So the next day I enrolled in a public speaking class and that kind of set me off on things that I'm doing now. And so I was proud of how I rebounded to that, but oh my gosh, those definitely top embarrassing moments in my life, being in front of all these people who I work with all the time, having them watch me have a total meltdown. It was pretty well, fun. And especially when you're trying something new, like you're trying to get into that space of speaking and yeah. giving something back and it's a new space. And so you're trying to please, you don't really have the time on the stage yet. You don't have the experience under your belt. You're trying to get out there and then you hiccup. But what I notice about your reaction to it, though, is we all have choices that we make when something doesn't go right. And many people, after a scenario like that, especially after getting a sour look from the speaker they were introducing, might have said, screw it, this is not for me, I will never get in front of a group again, I will never take a microphone, and they would just sit down and go back to doing what they've always done. And then there's the very, very small sliver of the world that says, you know what, that did not go well, I am never doing this again, I'm going to get better. So the choice is, to do something about it and make yourself better or to just let it go. Now, granted, there's times in life when we should all let it go because maybe that's not your talent or skill, but there's a moment where you hit that crossroads. I mean, it's the Robert Frost poem, The Road Less Traveled, and two roads diverge in a yellow wood. So what do most people do? Give up. So do you tell this story to your age? Oh, yeah. Your training oh, yeah. So think, I got to make one more phone call. I can do this. Yes, yeah. I got... I lost the listing. Yes, I got cussed out. Yes, I can call somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. And now I coach people on how to speak. And I tell that story just so they know that like, it's going to happen and, and you can make progress. Like you can figure this out. So yeah, I totally tell that story. I totally do. Well, what was the program you went to? Was it Toastmasters? Did you do something that's a oh, traditional program? You know what? It was a little college. I was living in a little town called Breckenridge, Breckenridge Colorado. It's a ski resort and there's Colorado Mountain College. And the next day I got online to look to see if they had a public speaking class. And sure enough, they did. And that kind of set me on a cool path of doing more and more presenting. Well, frankly, it's where all realtors should be spending some time because whether they want to admit it or not, they are doing public speaking and giving presentations on a regular basis and need to be honing that skill and becoming masters of it. Totally. All right. So if Eric, somebody wants to reach out to you and find out more about what you're doing and find out more about the agents in your Fort Collins, Colorado office or your speaking or any of that, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah, I think the best way, Lee, is my website that's tied to my training and coaching and speaking business. So it, it's inspireperformprofit.com. 
So inspireperformprofit.com, check it out and uh, you can find out more about me. And the link is right here in the show notes for this episode. So feel free to click away and follow Eric online and see if there is a fit there for you to become a better professional. Eric, thank you for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this and had a little giggle, that means you owe me five stars, a review, a like, and a share because your friends need to know that there's crazy shit over here that will make you better and make you laugh. And in the meantime, go have a great day and I'll see you next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you are a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, you just need to one up the story you just heard then make sure to dm me on instagram at lee thomas brown or tweet me at lee brown or frankly any social network where you hang out i'm there and if you had some fun then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes 